Uh, all right, I'm going to bring up our last performer, Molly Hagen. Molly is a semi-nomadic being who has traveled between South America, East Africa, and Asia. She's an herbalist, beekeeper, and foodie, currently working as an online English teacher. Over the past year, she has been journeying across Asia studying languages, food, and bees while exploring the unknown. Her native location is Rhode Island. Let's give it up for Molly. Um, yeah, so I've spent a lot of time outside of the United States, as he mentioned, uh, most of the past five years. Last month, I returned from a year-long journey in Asia, and the two years before, I was in East Africa. So, foreign is a word that's very familiar to me, um, but there are so many things I do that relate to the word foreign, and I couldn't decide what to present on. At first, I was like, I could talk to them about how to get free airline flights with credit card rewards points. You know, people love learning about free things and how to hack the system in tactical ways. Um, but no, that's like a little too concrete. Or I could talk about the food of Asia because who doesn't love Asian food? There's so much amazing stuff. It was a big part of my adventure, taking cooking classes seeking out fresh durian or seafood or scanning the shelves of the traditional restaurants. But still, I found myself really drawn to the word foreign. I wanted to dissect it and talk about how humans experience this word. And if you look it up on the internet, it says of, from, in, or characteristic of a country or language other than one's own. Um, so it very much implies differences, things that are strange and unfamiliar. So of course the opposite would be familiar. We're familiar with things in our native place, in our familiar environment. Um, and we start to experience the foreign when we invite this into our lives. And that's how I um, experience the foreign is through travel. So I thought I'd break that down for you, how that process works with travel. So step one, you experience the foreign in your own familiar environment. This might be through foods, through um, wildlife videos or nature documentaries if you're, if you're in the US, if you've got a TV. Other people don't have a TV and just the concept of a TV itself is foreign and that is a foreign object that would be brought over by foreigners from foreign lands. Um, and so everyone's native location is different. Some people are starting in the small village and the next step to experiencing the foreign would be stepping into a foreign land. And so maybe you're going from a small village into a city, maybe the other way around. The transition doesn't have to be so extreme, but anywhere you go, then you're gonna start to experience foreign elements in the context of a foreign culture and a foreign environment. If you're in Nepal, you're going to get familiar with eating dalbat. Nepali people eat it for every meal. Um, it's really good, so there's that. But they even have t-shirts they sell. It says dalbat power 24 hour because it's like all they eat, seriously. So you get really familiar with that. Um, you also get familiar to the sight of prayer flags that are draped everywhere. Um, it's really beautiful. They believe that the wind blows through the prayer flags and carries compassion, goodwill, and prayers to the surroundings and to the people. Um, and you learn about this culture that revolves around peace and comfortably you become familiar with it. Um, and as you grow accustomed to a nation, you'll become familiar with the language, with the environment. You might go to different places where the weather is shifting, there's different native dialects, um, and you start to adapt to these too, but these inch closer and closer into your familiar. And then you switch it up totally again um, to invite the foreign in. You go to a totally different place and now you're on a foreign island and the people flock to the seas once a year and they're harvesting sea worms. They go into the ocean and they harvest sea worms that are the reincarnation of a princess that sacrificed herself a long time ago. And they also have this tradition of battling each other with bamboo sticks and it's really fierce like it's really fierce and they've got these leather shields too but then it's really funny because they're really joyful about it and they do like dance moves in between like strikes and they've got like a live band 
Um, and the food's different there too. At this time of year, they eat sea worms because it's the reincarnation of a princess. So it's good luck. You want to eat the sea worms. Um, and they really do appear only once a year. That plate was actually my dish and I finished all of that. I'm very proud of myself. Um, so the more you travel, you get familiar with the process of familiarizing yourself with these foreign environments. Um, it really opens up the world. The world kind of becomes a bigger place. And you see that foreign isn't just one thing, but actually it's so many things. And it opens up a whole world of definitions within foreign. Um, and it's not just familiar, it's not just foreign, but you end up dancing back and forth between the two as elements shift within foreign cultures, as you cross different boundaries. Um, and it's interesting because what happens to the familiar that you once started with? You know, you've been, re you've been familiarizing yourself with all these new places. That brain space has been um, reworked, inviting foreign things um, into the familiar. And so it's interesting going back. Maybe you see your home native place as another spindle in the web of foreign locations. Um, but it will never be quite that way. It's always going to be different because it's your home place. But sure enough, when you return back to that place, your perspective from within will never be the same um, after you venture out into the foreign. So thank you guys. I hope that I've inspired you a little bit to travel um, and to, you know, break out of the familiar, switch it up a little bit. Um, if you want, you can follow me along with your travels. If you're not able to travel, no pressure, but I know how Providence can get in the wintertime, so I've been there, done that. Okay, thank you all.